Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you a full Predator 212 unboxing and disassembly. So this is the non-hemi version. It will be the exact same, if not almost the exact same, for the hemi versions. So a little bit, a little information about it. So the non-hemi, uh, I would mainly get the non-hemi if I'm planning on spending a little bit of money on the motor. If I'm going for a really budget engine, I usually put a hemi on there. And the non-hemi comes with a dish piston. You'll see that later in the video. The hemi actually has a complete flat piston, which is a flat top piston. So the flat top piston is one of the better things of the hemi. And it's one of the reasons people buy it. And the non-hemi revs higher because it actually comes with incre uh, heavier springs than the hemi stock. And the hemi people usually buy for the the acceleration so if you're looking for a low-end power stock engine then get the hemi if you're looking for top end power which is like your top speed get the non hemi so the non hemi is really good for when you want to put 26 pound or more springs or even less you know any it'll handle anything because of those split keepers which you'll see later in the video the hemi actually has these like push type of springs that you can just take out with one hand and what I would do is I would take the Hemi flat top piston and put it in your non-Hemi for best results. So yeah, let's get into the video and check the description out if you want to see what exact tools you'll need. So when opening your engine, you're going to get the manual, which will be helpful for torque specs. And then you're also going to get a spark plug removal tool. So the first thing I do, sorry I didn't show it here, is I take a 13 millimeter for the muffler box and I just put it on there and then to knock it out because it's usually tight I just use my mallet it's really simple and that's why I didn't really show it but yeah don't lose your gasket so for air box removal all you're gonna need to do is take a 10 millimeter with your ratchet and just loosen those two bolts right there they come a little bit tight from the factory so and then next you're gonna want to take your flathead screwdriver and you're gonna want to push it between that tube up there just knock it out for the gas vent. That's usually really tight, that's why I use a flat head. And then you can just go ahead and take those bolts out and then that uh, air box will come right out. But if, it, if you notice that it's not coming out, pay attention to the vent that's connected to the valve cover in the back. I'll show you that in one second. So yeah, it looks exactly like this. Sometimes it gets really tight in there, so just you can use your flat head to just pull it out. Next step, I use some small pliers to loosen that clamp for the carburetor. Just pull it up a little bit. And then next, I go and loosen the throttle assembly. I push the arm a little bit forward and then break those two bolts, which are 5 sixteenths. And the arm you'll be able to just leave forward because it comes a little bit tighter from the factory. So yeah. So you just loosen that. It'll come out. The governor spring is under it. You just kind of have to push a little bit. It'll easily come out. And then I just put those bolts back in. Yep. So now I'm going to remove the carburetor. I'm going to move that uh, black piece a little bit. And I'm going to take those two uh, rods out and the spring out. And I just push it down a little bit and the spring knocks right out. It's that simple. And now you can just let those hang. Carburetor will come out. Just I just say pull it in the in the tube will come out itself and just get that other piece out too and yeah just put the gasket back in and just put those bolts back in now the gas tank I'm not really going to show but it's just 5 sixteenths for that bolt back there and then two 10 millimeters and then it'll just come right off it's as simple as that and now for the arm to get these springs out, you just kind of move like with it. Just push them down, get it out. It's really simple. It might take a little bit of time, but it's not that hard. Yep. And then you can go ahead and take that 10 millimeter bolt out and just, yeah, just pull it out. You won't really be needing that screw anymore, so you can just throw that away. But yeah. For spark plug removal, you can either use the thing that comes with your ratchet sets, or you can use the tool they give you. And it it's a lot of thread so yeah it'll just come out but then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pull start and flywheel cover out so I'm just gonna crack those bolts they're five sixteenths 
the one on the top right is going to be one that's holding your on off switch the one on the bottom left is going to be holding your heat shield so I just loosen all those bolts and just pull them out and I usually go ahead and paint my flywheel cover I always do it white and then my pull start I take that 212 sticker off and put something new because I don't really like to show that it's a 212 cc all the time So to get the on off switch you take your flat head and there's going to be a part to the right that's going to actually say on off. You're going to want to stick the flat head part between that and it will easily come it right off. It might take a little bit of time just try not to damage anything but yeah it should easily come off. And next you can take your heat shield out it's just two five sixteenths. You already took one out when you were taking off the flywheel cover that will come off as well. And I usually don't use the heat shields a lot of the time because I don't like how they look. But next, the ignition, two 516 bolts. They'll also come right out. And then these are a little bit longer bolts, so they'll take a little bit more time. And then, uh, yeah, some people are kind of afraid to switch their ignitions, but it's as easy as that. So then you could take that uh, part that's connected right there and just pull that apart. And then next is the, probably the hardest thing. So you you're you want to take your flat head, put it between there, put your 19 millimeter ratchet, and just slam it with a mallet over and over again until it loosens. It will, trust me. Next, once you get that out, you're gonna take your chisel, hit it with the mallet in there, and then take your other one, go behind it, and then just uh, lightly tap it. And the flywheel should just knock off. Don't go, don't go crazy with it. It'll, it should easily come off. This is usually always easy for me. Just make sure you have those two, that one at the bottom as well, supporting. See, it just easily came out. And then next for your valve cover, is just four, five, sixteen bolts. Really, really simple. I just take it out. Make sure your gasket's okay. This gasket usually, when it's a brand new engine, has no troubles coming out. It's a little bit sticky. Just make sure this stuff doesn't damage unless you want to spend another ten bucks on another gasket set. Next, take your 14 millimeter wrench and your 10 millimeter ratchet piece, and then just break that bolt right there. And it's really, really tight usually, but it should come right off. So you just take those two little black pieces out, and then you take those silver pieces out, and then everything else will come right out. Then make sure you do not forget your push rods because sometimes I try to take the head off and the push rods just do not come off and it just the head doesn't come off and that's always because I forget the push rods. So make sure you grab those right here. Yep, one and two. So to take the cylinder head off, it's really simple. Don't be afraid to do it. I kind of was the first time, but it's those four 12 millimeter bolts, two inside the valve cover area, two on top near the spark plug. You just take those out. Next, you can take your gasket out and make sure you got those two dowel pins, the one on the top left, the one on the top right, uh, bottom right, and just keep those safe. Now for side cover removal, it's just 10 millimeter. Break those bolts right there, just six of them. And sometimes they're kind of tight because they are torqued down to spec. This is one of the things you need to torque down. So I just break all of them and then just pull them out with my hand. Uh, they're threaded a long way, so yeah, I'll take a little bit of time. But yeah, this is really simple stuff. And then right after this comes out, it's really important that you try to keep that gasket safe unless you want to spend 10 bucks on a new one. So what I do is that's why I don't wait to drive it and then remove the governor I do this right away so my gas gets nice and new and I slowly hit it with a mount to take the side cover off and my gas gets a little bit sticky but you just have to work with it slowly take it off try not to rip it if you do 
it's not a huge deal, but yeah, it should come off easily. To take your cam off, it's also really simple. It's just one of those things that you pull out, as you can see. I just completely pull it out. And the way you put it back in is you're going to see two circle, uh, two small holes on the teeth. And you're going to see one on the crank as well. That's how you line it up. So I'm showing it right here. There's that hole and there's a really small hole if you could see on that crank right there. They're going to have to kind of go in between each other and that's how you get the timing right. Next, you take these two small pieces out, and you can just make sure you don't lose these these tappets right here. So make sure you get both, because they might just fall out. You might not notice, so it doesn't hurt to just pull them out. It's really not that hard to put them back in. So Next, I take the oil sensor out. I just crack those two 5 16 bolts, and I just pull that out. And then I go over here and take my adjustable wrench to crack that bolt. It's never tight. And I just loosen it. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and take my 10 millimeter wrench to crack those bolts on my rod after I go ahead and remove these wires right here. Because I'm going to actually pull that whole oil sensor out. And I suggest you do this if you're planning on making your engine rev over 7500 or around 7000 just to be safe but yeah take those two 10 milli crack those two 10 millimeter bo bolts on the rod and then just kind of work with it to get a good angle this is kind of like the hardest place to reach into but yeah you, you, it should be easy and you just pull it out and then just remember how it goes in the, the dipstick faces down yep and then you can just move that that crank to get that piston, I mean to get that rod out. And I actually completely took, took the piston out. If you're not replacing your piston like I am with the flat top piston, don't do this because then you're going to have to go out and buy your uh, the, the tool to push your piston in. Yeah, you can just pull that crank out now. And then you can also take that oil sensor out. And now you're ready for governor removal. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the governor removal in my next video.